How we doing, guys? Just uh, we took off Wednesday, came back Thursday, uh, watched the second half of the game, and I had a really good practice uh, yesterday. And, you know, just trying to, we've evaluated every possession in the last seven minutes of, of all of our games. And, uh, you know, and did all kind of offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency, and some things that we've got to improve on. And we had some great opportunities against Florida. Obviously, you know, the, the biggest part was uh, second shot opportunities when we were up nine and 50-50 uh, balls and, and offensive rebounds. And then on the other end, I thought we had some, Really good offensive opportunities. Didn't didn't make it, but in these leagues, you got to go to the next day. And uh, looking forward to tomorrow. We all love the early starts. I think everybody in college basketball loves them, and uh, and I think our guys are looking forward to playing Georgia. John, start us off. Kermit, you mentioned you guys had uh, some good practices this week. How? What's kind of the frustration level of your guys kind of been like in practice this week, and how much has the intensity kind of ramped up in those inset practices? Yeah, zero frustration. There's no frustration. I mean, are we disappointed we're, we've lost? No question. I mean, losing is no good. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about after Christmas of, I mean, Alabama and, and LSU, maybe the two best teams in the league besides Tennessee, they got us. But, you know, you take after the break, Wichita State and Florida, we talk about it a bunch, and we make – maybe one play on each end in both games. Like I said, we're sitting here with, with eight wins and two and two in the league, and everybody thinks we're fine. So, you know, so there's no frustration. No, the only time I would ever really get frustrated is when our team won't practice, and we're not going to let that happen. I mean, our teams, they came with, with good spirits. Are they disappointed? We watched the tape again of all the opportunities, no question about it, and those are the things that, that we've got to get fixed. Go to Ben. Herman, what's the evaluation of the scout of Georgia? You know, just they, they can score. I mean, their point guard may be one of the fastest downhill point guards in college basketball and Wheeler. Um, I mean, they go to LSU and get beaten overtime and they get 80, and he just dominated the game. I mean, he just stayed in the paint all game long. Uh, you know, that, that day they made 12 threes. Uh, they've been a really good offensive team. They're giving up, you know, they're, it's just obvious they're giving up points in our league, uh, but they can score. And uh, just got a kid eligible, Johnson, who had 19 or 20 against uh, Auburn. So a really, really good offensive team. Nick, go ahead. Kermit, if you just look at wins and losses this year, it seems like across the entire SEC, home court advantage has kind of disappeared with all the COVID protocols. Just from your vantage point, playing at home and on the road, is there any difference anymore or is it all kind of the same game? You know, besides, you know, Nick, venues of just shooting, there really is. Because nobody we, – we, I, I never hear a crowd – you know, I'm sure they don't in the pavilion. Uh, m maybe one time, a little bit, when, when Locke hit a three to take the lead, but, but not much. And uh, I know everybody's doing what they can do. Each, every, each venue's fans are doing what they can do. But I think you're just going to see that. We talked about it a bunch as a staff early on that, that that's going to happen. Uh, you know, and, uh, but it really isn't besides the travel and just maybe shooting on different goals. There, there's really not much advantage at all. Go to Christopher. Hey, Coach. Chris from um, Arizona State Student New Newspaper. At ASU, Romello White always brought uh, such a fierce energy on the glass, and he really set the standard for team rebounding over there. Has Romello brought that same sense of rebounding energy and leadership to your team this year? And, and if so, how have you seen him demonstrate it? He's been a great guy to coach, but obviously, you know, Romello and I have met, we've met a lot. I mean, he's not rebounding it like he did at Arizona State. And, uh, you know, we had two rebounds the other night against Florida. And so, you know, we're – so we, we've got to do better. Romello White, you know, needs to do better as far as being physical and dominating and, and closing games out, you know, just like the other night, you know, of just rebounding, closing games out. And Romello's not the long ranger on our team either. You know, we got to have other guys to do that. But he's, he's been a joy to coach, great young guy, and uh, he's done some really good things for us offensively. But, yep, yeah, and, and I think Romello's the first one to admit that he's got to rebound it better. Back to Ben. Go ahead, Ben. You're muted. All right, any other questions? Back to Nick. Uh, just following up on how Matt's doing. I know he kind of was a little gimpy in that last game. Yeah, he's, he's doing good. I just talked to Matt. Uh, we're going to practice here today at 11 o'clock. He, he took a – it was kind of a knee, and he kind of came down wrong. 
and uh, we're, we're just glad that it's not serious. But I put him back in. He, he didn't look 100. He looked probably about 75 or 80 percent. We just weren't gonna chance it, and uh, so we just set him the rest of the rest of the game. But I, I think Matt's he'll be at full speed uh, tomorrow. He was he was live yesterday in practice, and uh, we'll look forward to having him back. John, go ahead. After the Florida game, Devontae said that some guys had been uh, a little lackadaisical at, at practice during during that week. I know you said that you guys have had a good practice, but was that something you noticed at all last week before the Florida game, and how good has he been at, like, as a vocal leader in the locker room? Yeah, you know, I think Devontae has really matured. I think we need to hear Devontae's voice even more. You know, we do. And uh, out on the floor, he's, he's a quiet guy, you know, but even as a point guard. But Devontae had a really good practice uh, yesterday, probably had a couple guys that didn't meet the standards uh, in practice, and it's probably why a couple guys started and a couple guys didn't. And, uh, you know, Demencio Vaughn had, had had a really good practice, and that's why we gave him more minutes because of his physicality. Uh, Demencio was out yesterday with just some flu-like symptoms. He's back today. Uh, but, yeah, but for the most part, our team has been a – has been a good practice team. It's not perfect, you know, and uh, like every coach in America, you're trying to get more guys to – because, you know, it, it's in our league, it's what does it take to close that game? It just it just kind of takes what it takes. And, uh, you know, there's no in-between. I mean, the, the game demands a lot. And if you don't give it its full attention, you're going to struggle. And if you give it its full attention, you're going to be successful. And, uh, you know, right now in SEC play, we're last in the SEC in rebound margin just an SEC play. And with guys like, you know, the size that we have, Romello and Dream and KJ and Luis and, you know, guards, you know, Devontae got one rebound the other night. And so, yeah, those are the things that we can control. Shot making sometimes can be shot making, but we can still, you know, win games without making 10 threes. And, but we got to hang our hat defensively and rebounding. And if we do that the other night, John, we win the game. It doesn't matter what we did offensively, you know. So uh, that's something that we can control. we got to get better at that. Back to Christopher. Just as a, as a quick follow-up question to, to Romello, as a grad transfer, has he kind of come in and impacted the locker room with some of his veteran tendencies this season? He has. He has. He's, uh, you know, and for, for a grad transfer, he's already got his degree. He did great in school. Uh, the fall semester was a tribute to, to Romella. Uh, he has. He's been great in our locker room, very popular with, with all of our guys, and our guys really, really enjoy him. And, uh, yeah, so from that standpoint, he, he's, he's been really, really a, a good guy to be around. Back to Ben. You brought him up, Kermit, but Demencio played um, his third game, I think, with double-digit minutes. What did he do well, and where did he show improvement at the did show in terms of what you were looking at. Yeah, you know, the, the reason he hasn't played as much as defensively and, you know, we, we missed a couple assignments late on uh, – we're double teaming the post from the baseline. We were late there. Uh, but it's just his energy really, Ben. I mean, he's got such a loud voice in our gym. Uh, you know, he's always leads us in rebounding. And, uh, and I thought the other night, you know, he, he made a timely three on a great extra pass. He drove the ball late, great shot, got blocked at two feet, one of those six or seven attempts that we had really good looks. It's just been his practice. I mean, he didn't play against Auburn. He was the happiest guy in the locker room. Uh, came to practice, you know, the next day and played. Uh, so that those kind of things, you know, coaches just, we, we, we all notice. and We want to give him a chance, and, uh, and he'll get a chance tomorrow night too, or tomorrow afternoon.